Cadillac's best-known SUV is the three-row Escalade, but that truck-based sport ute can be too big and expensive for many buyers. The XT5 is a full magnitude smaller than the Slade. This two-row crossover replaces the SRX that had been in production since 2009, so it's about time for a replacement. There's a lot of competition in this segment. Audi Q5, BMW X3, Mercedes GLE, Lexus RX350, and even if you have a lot of money, it's wise to cross shop so you know that the vehicle that ends up in your driveway is the one that's right for you. XT5 is not a reskinned SRX, it rides on a new platform. I'm testing a top trim platinum all wheel drive model. Its only major option is a $1,600 package adding reverse automatic braking, automated parking assist, and adaptive cruise control, bringing the retail price to $66,500 not inexpensive. Easily recognized as a Cadillac, the lines are a softened version of the brand's art and science design language. This plunging character line gives it the look of a tall four-door ELR, and that's a good thing. Why more manufacturers don't hide the rear wiper up top is a mystery to me. In the U.S., there's one engine, a 310 horsepower 3.6 liter V6. It offers up 271 pound-feet of torque and the deactivation of two cylinders under light loads to save gas. Another fuel saver, all-wheel drive can be switched on only when needed. The 8-speed automatic transmission is controlled by the kind of electronic shifter that requires deliberate action. There's a manual mode, plus different driving modes to help navigate various conditions. Not sure if you've heard, but uh, occasionally it uh, rains in Seattle, and all-wheel drive is good for slippery streets. It's not just for snow. And the twin clutch system is sophisticated. It can send all power to the front or rear. An electronically controlled rear differential can route all available power left or right, in case one of those back tires has no traction. If zero to 60 performance is your thing, car and driver clocks XT5 at 6.6 .6 seconds. Now, if you're going to drag race your neighbor's crossover, something I don't recommend, you'll probably win against a Lexus RX, but not an Audi Q5. Performance-wise, the Caddy is a bit of a tweener. General Motors does fuel-saving automatic engine start-stop systems very well. Unlike other manufacturers, it does not provide a dedicated button to turn it off. This shouldn't be a problem since the operation is smooth and unobtrusive. The system can be defeated by putting the transmission selector in manual mode or selecting the climate control to max AC, uh, just so you know. This rig is very quiet. Of course it is. It's a Cadillac, though if you really put your foot into it, there is a little bit of raspiness from the engine, so if you're the kind of driver that does that all the time, something to pay attention to on the test drive. The suspension, which has a continuous damping control system, can be firmed up or relaxed, and it keeps the ride quality composed. In case you haven't heard, Cadillac hasn't done the soft floaty dynamic for, oh, I don't know, 10 years? This Platinum model adds rear cradle bushings, apparently to keep back passengers more comfortable. It's my opinion that Cadillac makes some of the best handling sedans in the business these days. Seriously, XT5 is pretty good. The suspension is firm but comfortable, what you would expect in a crossover these days. It handles the corners pretty well, but if you're the kind of driver that really hammers your vehicle in the curves, you might check out Q5 or Macan. Alfa Romeo Stelvio and Jaguar F-Pace too. At an EPA rated average of 21 miles per gallon, the XT is among the least efficient in class. Two things though, I averaged 23 miles per gallon and this machine runs on specified standard grade fuel, whereas some vehicles like X3 and Q5 specify premium. General Motors has been doing a very good job of tuning its automatic transmissions. You may not even notice the gear shifts. They're not quite as quick as the dual clutch unit in a Porsche Macan, but for a luxury crossover, the dynamic is right. 
XT5 weighs less than SRX despite being slightly wider with a longer wheelbase. Cadillac brags it's 100 pounds less than the Audi Q5 while being 7 inches longer and 650 LBSs lighter than the Mercedes GLE. All that and the IIHS gives the XT a top safety pick rating. Depending on trim level, Cadillac offers five interior color and accent choices that include carbon fiber, two aluminums, and three woods. So if this particular look isn't right for your discerning eye, uh, there are options. This is a soothing space with top-notch materials. That said, perfect fit and finish isn't too much to expect at Cadillac's asking price. Soft lining like what's in here would work well here to keep stowed things from rattling. This action should be dampened or motorized. Some touch points don't respond instantly, though the volume slider does, and there I'd rather have a knob, that's just me. On the positive, the heated and vented seats are very supportive. This phone slot has a wireless charging pad in it. Storage is ample and well thought out. A rear view mirror that's also a high res video screen completely eliminates blind spots. This is great technology. In the past, Cadillac's user interface has been savaged. This one is quite good with solid touch response. The graphics though have the General Motors corporate look. Doesn't Cadillac deserve its own unique visual? The bird's eye view should help owners keep their vehicles dent free. You know, for being the evil twin, a lot of people have been commenting lately, uh, you're not acting so evil. <laughs> really? Uh, have you checked the front end of your Miata this morning? He should never have let me have the keys. Uh, anyways, let's get to the back seat. I am five foot nine and I have an adequate amount of space back here. Headroom could be a little bit more generous. The panoramic sunroof could have something to do with that. Seats are high enough so that thigh support is good. Foot room is fine. The seat slides so you can max out either a cargo room or leg room. Seats recline too. The floor is nice and flat. Two power ports will keep everybody happy, especially if passengers with iPads are using the built-in Wi-Fi hotspot. The rear climate zone and heated outboard cushions will keep folks comfy. If you're often carrying long-legged adults, there's a little bit more leg room here than Q5 and GLE. Wouldn't mind integrated side sunshades, this being a Cadillac and all. This is nine packs of softness and absorbency. It is what will fit into a Mercedes GLE or Lexus RX 350. This adjustable frame keeps things from sliding around, but ultimately I find it just gets in the way. Fortunately, it can be folded and stowed away near the spare tire which is a $350 option. Uh, that extra charge isn't unusual these days, people. It's easy to drop the seats. As a guy that uses the cargo hold a lot, I appreciate the extra utility of a 40-20-40 split seat. As you know, I always do my signature trunk test with the seat backs up if it's a two-row rig. And what do you know? The X-T5 matches the Lexus and Mercedes at nine bundles. At 66,500 bucks as tested, X-T5 is definitely on the high end of the price spectrum. I suspect, like I do with all General Motors products, there's a substantial amount of wiggle room built into the MSRP so dealers can offer what looks like a killer deal. Cadillac is hard at work on more crossovers. The small X-T4 can't hit showrooms soon enough. There are rumors of an even smaller X-T3 and a large X-T6 crossover that has the potential to eat into Escalade sales. But for now, the choice is living large with the X-T5, living larger with the Slade, or ditching the Caddy Crest on the grill and checking out the competition. Uh, it can be argued that Cadillac started the luxury SUV segment when it created the Escalade. It was painfully clear that the first generation looked like a Chevy Suburban with lipstick. Uh, these days, not so much. And I understand that X-T5 can be compared with Mercedes GLC on the smaller end and BMW X5 on the larger. Sometimes comparing between these vehicles is not a cut and dried thing. Okay, I can't leave without playing armchair marketing director when it comes to Cadillac's nomenclature. I am not feeling the love with alphanumeric badges like XT5 and CT6. I think the brand needs names. Yes, it's a very difficult thing to do, and 
I don't see Cadillac going back to classics like Coupe de Ville or Fleetwood Brome because they don't fit the brand's modern vibe. But I'll argue that after dropping the Brome, Fleetwood is a great name for a crossover. Lincoln is going back to names. Eh, just saying. Seville is a classic that would work. Okay, I'll drop it. It's the end of the piece, so time for that one more thing moment. At the top of the piece, I suggested that people test drive a lot of different vehicles because in this segment, these crossovers start at about $40,000. For some reason, that advice annoys some people. Here's why I say it. Many of you are auto enthusiasts. You know what's going on. There are a lot of people, and I meet them, who don't. So it's really important for them to go out, to test drive, to experience these vehicles, to see what they're missing. It's especially important for people who are brand loyal. So there you go. That's why I say it, okay? That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.